Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I am getting the uh, Flex CNC here set up for my first uh, real job in there. And I've got a shaft that's gonna be coming in probably two or three days that we've got a, it's just a very simple job of milling keyways on each end. So a job like this is where the Flex CNC is really gonna shine because it can handle those long work pieces very easily. And that's all we gotta do. We, we got a one and 15 16 shaft. We've got a keyway milled on both ends. One, one's, uh, I believe, two and a half inches long. The other one's seven inches long, a uh, half inch key. So a very simple operation. So what I'm doing is I'm using this particular job as another great training session for my part here in the shop. I've already started on this. I'll kind of talk you through a little bit of uh, what we've already been doing. And like I said, I'm learning. This is stuff that I'm trying to figure out. I have done countless shafts like this over in the manual, the manual milling machines like the KBC right there. And I could certainly set it up and get that done, but I'm challenging myself to try to think outside the box and think like you CNC machinists that do this kind of stuff every day. I'm trying to catch up to you guys and I got a long way to go, but hopefully we're gonna get this figured out and one step at a time, we're gonna work our, our way towards being able to do uh, some of those larger work pieces more easily in our CNC machine right here. So let me talk you through what we're doing right now. I have a shaft in there right now. This is the same size shaft that we're gonna be machining now. This is one that I uh, did in the past. You guys might have seen this in a previous video because we've already made this one and uh, they let me keep this one. So it ended up being the same shaft. All I did was I, I actually cut a few inches off of it because the one that we're making is, is slightly different. The keyways are a little bit different and the, and the end length was about four inches different. So what I'm using this for is a test piece. We've got the vices set up right here. I've got three of my Tico vices set up and I do have them all indicated in line, straight and parallel with each other. And took a little practice to get that done, but I think I figured it out and it worked out pretty good. I've got a little video clip here that we'll throw in the video so you guys can see me sweeping all three of these indicators, or I'm sorry, all three of these vices. And uh, they're all, they all should be within about a half, a, uh, half a thousandths with each other. So now that I know that I have all three of the vices in line, we're going to be using this as our test subject. I'm going to get this vice, or I'm sorry, this, the shaft set up. I just stuck it in there and decided this was time to go ahead and get the camera out, start showing you a little bit of uh, what we're going to be doing there. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get the, uh, I'm going to get the vice in there. You can see there's one of the keyways right there. So I'm going to turn that. So we're going to use this to practice on. So we're going to mill a couple keyways in it, make sure our programming is right. I may go ahead and set up some kind of machine stop as well so that I can reference our X position being right here so that whenever I go to uh, maybe move this around to cut it again and even stick the actual shaft in there that's gonna be the final piece, we can come back to our X zero uh, where we need to every time instead of having them measure. So we may just set up some kind of stop right here to do that. So that's, that's pretty much it. It's uh, pretty simple, but Challenging for me because this is all new to me, learning this uh, stuff right here. So I do have uh, Aaron up at Flex CNC. He's been giving me a hand, making sure that I'm operating the control here properly. And uh, hopefully this is gonna go pretty good. Our uh, jib crane is working out pretty good to uh, set work pieces in there. I designed, when I did the layout of the shop, I wanted to make sure we had our jib crane to where it could be used to set work pieces in here. So the end of that jib will actually go just past the uh, center line of the, uh, the bed here. So it should work out for most of our work pieces that's gonna be going there. So I'm gonna finish getting this set up and I'll bring you guys back whenever we're ready to move on to the next phase. This is the stop that I decided to use. So this is the Edge Technology Pro Stop vice mount. And the way it's designed there is that you bolt it to the back of the vice, you have 
different hole patterns in there so you can stick this out where you want it. And the way this works is that, you know, this is all adjustable to uh, set up for your workpiece. And then it's already, you can see it's already gonna clear our cutter right there. But what you can do with this, you can just go ahead and loosen the bolt there and you can swing it down out of the way to have uh, complete clearance there of your workpiece. And then whenever you're ready, before you take it out, go ahead and, um, it's hard to do it with just one hand right there, but you just go ahead and tighten it back up against your workpiece. Just lock it back in and it'll be right there against the face again. So pretty uh, nice little tool. It's the first time I'm using this. I've had it for a while and I just never set it up, but I thought this was the perfect opportunity. You can also, it's got this other little collar here that you can slide onto the rod. So if you needed to uh, extend a workpiece out further, you can actually use this little collar here to set a stop like they've got shown in that photo right there. Okay, so just wanted to point that out. So this is gonna be our X zero location. And the way I've got the program is that we're gonna, we're gonna it'll cut this keyway first, and then it will move down to the outer end here and, and cut this one. So we're not using two work locations. We're just using G54 on that vise there. And it'll come down here hopefully and cut this, cut this side. But that's why we're playing with it. This is a, a test practice piece and I can cut as many times as I want to make sure that we've got our program uh, proved out right before we set our work piece in there and do the real thing. So what I've done here or what I'm doing, I'm using the Heimer 3D sensor probe there. And what I wanted to do is check our, um, our Z from this position here and then that position down there. Now the shaft is old, it's got wear in it, but I was surprised to find that the difference using the sensor there was one thousandth difference on our Z. So I think that's gonna work out pretty good. Everything should, I was thinking that everything should be pretty square and parallel, but I wanted to confirm that and make sure that everything was right. So one thousandths across 148 inches uh, there where we were testing it with our 3D sensor. All right, we're gonna use our uh, 3D sensor probe there to find uh, X0. End of our shaft here will be X0. I'm just using the, uh, I've got the uh, pendant here in my hand, using that to control the machine. I just wanna bring this uh, where both dials are on zero. Not a big deal, we'll go ahead and move it down to tenths. We're just gonna be working off of bandsaw cut ends there, so that's why I wanted the stop here, the shaft to be in the same place where it stops. So we'll have clearance out here before our cut starts to make sure that it's not gonna hit the shaft before it starts cutting it or anything. All right, zero, zero, that should be our uh, X zero location for our G54 work offset. So I've been making some progress on our test piece here. I just finished cutting both ends for the first time. I actually made one cut on the, on the, on the first end down there, the left side, and the depth was, um, was wrong. And I still haven't figured out what I did wrong on uh, setting the work height location. I, I'm not sure yet. This is, and this goes into what I've been, I keep saying is that I, I got to learn this stuff. I got to figure it out. So <clears throat> we were able to adjust it and I reset the work height instead of using the Heimer, I ended up just using the tool and touching off on the shaft because I know that that would be right. So I came down to where it was just touching, reset Z, and then um, adjusted it that way. So I've made the first two cuts and I've done some measuring. Now I need to uh, adjust the uh, dimensions there in the program. It's a little bit too deep. It uh, depends on where I measure it because this is a worn out shaft. So this side I'm getting like 10 thousandths deeper. The other side is 8 thousandths. So I think I'm gonna adjust the depth. I'm gonna shallow it by 8 thousandths, try to get it close to that 0 0.250 depth. And um, as far as the width of the keyway goes, I'm gonna try to get another half a thousandths out of the width. Right now I just measured and I'll show you, it measures 0.4989. So I'd like to try to get it at that 0.4995. And, um, but I, I think where it's at, it would work, but I'd like to get it just a little bit bigger, a half a thousandths. So I'll give you a shot of what it's, what it's looking like right now. Remember this is a uh, wear in that this old shaft there. So I'm planning on uh, rotating it again and making another cut. 
and I didn't I didn't show any video of that yeah I didn't get any video because I'm trying to get this stuff worked out and then that way once I get it figured out and it's and it's actually uh, cutting the way it's supposed to then I can set the camera up and definitely give you guys a shot of that I am running flood coolant too so it's hard to show that so I don't know we may just do handheld whenever I'm cutting it we may see if we can stick the uh, Noga or the uh, GoPro in there and see if I can get you guys a shot. So this is the short keyway side. I've got a set of gauge blocks set up. This is what I've been using to measure the width uh, more accurately. Started with a groove mic. And uh, so this is my stack up that I've got. And that's why I feel like it's uh, 0.4989 because this, this works, this fitting in there just like it should. So you can see there's our first cut right there. It was way too deep and I knew that it was too deep, but I just went ahead and let it cut anyway because I just, I wanted to see it make some chips and see how the machine was going to do. And then adjusted our, uh, our tool, our Z, our height right there. So I do have my, uh, we got uh, this set of gauge blocks here that I'm going to use. And I started with my steric groove mic, uh, just kind of getting it, seeing where I was at and then using a gauge block stack up right here to do your final check to see where you're at. So I'm gonna get it, get it rotated and uh, we'll make another cut. And then once we, once we get this um, adjusted and I like where it's at, I'll get a video for you guys so you can actually see this thing in operation. All right, we're gonna go ahead and run this uh, sample piece one more time. I've made a few cuts on it and I've had to make some adjustments here or there. I, I did have some issues and had some things that were wrong and having to adjust um, uh, tool wear compensation so that it would open it up the way I want and as far, uh, the length and there's a couple other things, but I think we got it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let, I'm just gonna film this. We're gonna go ahead, I've got it rotated again and we are ready to go. So let's, uh, let's send it. Feed hold is right here, not feed hold, but your feed rate. So you can slow it down by using this knob right here. When you get down there close, like right there, bring that down. Your uh, feed is right there. And as you move that dial up, you can see it changes. I'm going to go up to 100%. There it is. Now this is something that I'm going to, I've got to change too. It's, it's going through what it's thinking is a tool chain cycle right here, but we're not doing a tool change. It's going to come back down. But uh, once I have this shaft proved out, we're going to eliminate that from the program so that it does a rough pass finish pass and goes to the other end. So now this is the finish pass. And what we can do at this point is just move our controller down. I'm going to slow this down right here again. Bring it down kind of slow to so make sure that it's not going to uh, crash or anything like that when you get it close. That looks good. So this would be our seven inch long cut here. We are using through spindle coolant. The flood coolant just made too much of a mess up here on the glass. You couldn't even see anything because it was just spraying it out. There's our cut we just made there.
right now it's going in for the finish pass. I made another adjustment on the uh, tool wear compensation, tried to open this key up a little bit, and I'm aware that I'm probably getting a slight amount of wear in this cutter as well from all these test cuts, but I think it's still gonna be fine to get this job finished out. So once it finishes this, we've got it set to where it'll just go, the gantry will just go right here to the middle and stop. All right, now we can get in there and uh, do our inspection. We'll get it cleaned up. I want to measure the width there and see where we're at. But I think, uh, I feel confident we're probably going to have this where we want it. We just got that one mod we need to make to where eliminate that uh, tool change. And I think we'll be ready to uh, put the actual shaft in here and get it cut. So this is our gauge block stack up right here, 0.4994. That's a good, that's a good fit on those gauge blocks right there. I did use the, uh, the gauge block one tenth smaller than this, and it was a little looser than this, obviously. So I think that this measurement right here is a good indication of our uh, slot width there for our key that we machined. Doing a uh, width check using my gauge blocks again, so I feel good about where it's at. This uh, with this gauge block stack up, we're at 0 .4994. I did try the uh, 0 .4993, uh, and it was a little bit more loose than what I think it would be to call it an actual uh, good measurement there. So I'm going to call this at 0 .4994 on our width of our keyway there. So I think we're we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get all this cleaned up and get ready for the, uh, the shaft. The, um, the shop has got that, I don't actually have the shaft here, the shop that I'm doing it for, they have the material. Uh, they're supposed to be getting it cut anytime today. I'm just waiting on them to call me and let, let me know that it's done. And once it's cut, I'm gonna go pick it up and uh, bring it back over here so that we can get started on it. Because now all the hard work is done. This is what's taken me hours to uh, get to this point. I started working on this yesterday, actually, and I've been playing with it because this is, uh, for me, this is training. This is what I'm doing is training. And I'm trying to get a little bit better at this. So now that I have my system proved out here, I think we're ready to just simply get the shaft in here and cut the keys and it's gonna be ready to go. So I went ahead and modified the program so that it eliminated that, um, that tool change in there and uh, kept it a little closer to the shaft whenever it goes all the way down. I'm gonna go ahead and run that uh, so that you can see that too. It's just gonna run through the last cut there. It's not gonna cut anything. Just going through the movements. Looking at my feed. All right, so see, it's not going to go all the way up and do a tool change. It's going to come back back down to our finished depth. Make a finish pass. It's going to come up, and then we're going to move to the other end. So it's, I've, I've already proved it out that it's, uh, it's working. I just wanted to share that with you guys since we're documenting this, uh, this first job. So you can see. All right, back down for the finish, finish pass. Finishing out the floor and the side. All right, guys, it's actually the next day. 
I've got the shaft right here. We've got it cut to length, dress the ends. It's ready to go into the flex here and actually get these, uh, these two keys milled. Since there was, uh, there was a lot of extra of the shaft that they had to order, I had them just cut me a short piece. We're gonna do one more test before I put that in there. I've got it mounted up in the uh, vise there now. We're gonna make one more cut on this. I wanna double check my width and my depth. See, it's gonna be good since we actually have a new piece of turn ground and polish because that other shaft got some wear on it. So I was getting variable uh, depths whenever I'd measured every time I rotate it. So I think I wanna try to get the camera uh, mounted in there for this cut so you guys can see it. But this is what I'm talking about. So there's our fresh piece of turn ground and polished. And we'll go ahead and um, get that. We're just gonna cut that one obviously and I'll stop the uh, machine uh, whenever it finishes that, that one cut there. So I wanted to show you this. I have adjusted the diameter wear by one and a half thousandths to uh, get the keyway size where, where it's at now, where I want it. We've also adjusted the, um, the tool wear, which is a reflection of the tool length there by six thousandths to get us on our, on our depth there where we want it there now. The last cut I did, I was right at, I was exactly 250 thousandths deep. So that should be good to go, but we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and cut that. Verify it one more time, and then if everything is good to go, we will set the, the main shaft in there and get it cut. All right, let's go for it. I got you mounted up inside the, uh, inside the enclosure there. I'm just doing a optional stop there and a reset. Now I got to get you get the enclosure out of the way. Jog Z up and then uh, bring the gantry back down. All right, we'll do our check. I'll, I've already done it, but I'll show you. I just usually just take a little stone like this and just very lightly stone that edge. That way you've got just a slight amount of little bevel there for the uh, gauge blocks and also it removes the burr off the top of it right there. So just a little trick that I, that I do without trying to um, take a bunch of metal off that edge that will uh, give you air reading on your depth. But here's our gauge block stack up and it's, it's fitting in there good. Still have that right amount of uh, friction there on the gauge blocks. So that should be good. And then let me grab my depth mic and see what we're measuring on our depth there. 250 thousandths. I know you can't see that with the GoPro, but that's 250 thousandths. I say we're good to go. It's time to get the, uh, the final shaft in there and let's make our final two cuts. All right, we've got all three of our vices clamped. I did verify the length of the shaft also. It's there. 
and I believe we are ready. We are ready to make our final cuts there. Let's do it. I got you mounted inside the enclosure again. I'm just going to let it run. Hopefully the coolant won't cover up the lens too much, but because of the nature of this kind of machining, I got to keep my hands over here on the controls just in case something happens. So we're going to let you just go along for the ride. all over the lens looks like there's a couple little drops but looks like it worked out pretty good all right I'm gonna get it cleaned up and uh, do our inspection work and make sure that we're still on size there's no reason why we shouldn't be on size and I'll uh, show you guys that that worked out pretty slick I love it all right, guys, let's do our final inspection on here. We got everything cleaned off. We did our light hone along the edge there. Um, I got the depth mic in my hand, so we'll just go ahead and do that. And it is at, that's like 250 and a, and a half a thousandths. So working out good. And that will be affected if you over, if you over deburr this top edge right there, over hone it. That's why I say you just, you just want to get rid of the burr, just lightly hone it. Got our gauge block stack up. This is the same one, 499.6. Fitting in there just like the other one there, same amount of friction, so it should be good. And I have verified the length already. I did that off camera with the scale, and we are to the proper length. So we'll go to the long key and check that one. Same thing, we've got it, we've got it honed. Fitting in there nicely. Good on our uh, width there. We'll check our depth. All right, 250 and 1,000. So 251 is what I'm measuring it right there. 251. We're good to go. All we got left now is just to kind of finish getting it cleaned up and get it out of there. We got one more thing we're going to do with the machine to uh, get it put away. We're going to we're going to put the tool away and uh, blow the coolant out of the spindle. 
So the last thing I'm gonna do with the machine is I wanna go ahead and put that tool away into the carousel. But we also, before we put it away, we wanna blow what's left of the coolant out of the tool. We'll put the tool away, it's gonna come out, then it's gonna do another air blast trying to blow what's left of the coolant in the spindle out. So we've got that little program here in MDI. We should be ready to go. Five second dwell. Put it in um, tool pocket number five. That's it. There's the end of the program. So that's what they've taught me to do whenever we're through using the machine with coolant, try to help blow what's left that out of there. So uh, probably something a lot of you CNC guys already are well aware of, but just trying to document my little journey. All right, time to get this shaft out of the machine. We are done. Hey, real briefly, I wanted to touch base with you guys on the coolant that I'm running here in the flex. So this is the Master Fluids. It's the Trim Microsoft 685. This is what they recommended that I, that I run in the machines based off of the type of work that I do and that I will be doing in the machines right here. So what I wanted to uh, mention is that I've noticed that this stuff, it kind of reminds me of my SP350 rust inhibitor, meaning that once the coolant actually starts to dry once you clean the machine off and the, you know you still have that coolant residue left on the machine it actually dries but leaves an oily residue on the machine and i really like that because now i don't have to necessarily uh, worry about everything starting to flash rust after the coolant you know you don't have to blow it completely dry you can just let the water dry and it leaves some of the coolant the the oil on the machine i don't know if this side I haven't touched this side over here. And you can kind of, you, maybe you can kind of make out, it's got that oily surface on there, just like a rust inhibitor. So I think that's working really well. I didn't realize that that's actually how it was designed to work, but it's, uh, it's doing really good. So the Microsoft 685 by Master Fluids. It's been some really good stuff so far. Well guys, that's gonna finish up this job in this video that I'm sharing with you. You know, I was uh, really excited to get a hold of my very first customer workpiece that I could put in here and uh, get some training on and, uh, and, and get this job done and show you something interesting that this, uh, this mill can handle. Now, obviously this is just one little example of uh, the benefits of having a uh, flex CNC with the long bed. You can do uh, long work pieces up to 20 foot in this machine and up to four foot across in your uh, Y axis there, you know? So you could actually have all kind of multiple workstations in this if, if that's what you needed it for. All kind of different vice setups and different work offsets in here, work locations, uh, to use it to your benefit. Or if you just got one big piece that you need to put in there, that's where this machine's really gonna shine for things like that. And it's gonna be able to handle uh, small machining, large machining, and pretty much anything that you can throw at it. So I'm really excited, really looking forward to uh, having some other different types of uh, work and jobs that we can do and show uh, some of the benefits of this machine. I'm definitely interested in getting some, um, doing some heavy milling in this thing too. We'll get some, you know, big thick blocks of steel and some, uh, some of our face mills in there and really push that spindle and, uh, you know, see it, see it do some work. But uh, it's, uh, it's getting late in the day, Friday here, so this shaft is, I'm just gonna leave it right here 
since it's uh, fully supported in three points right there, it's just going to stay there so that Monday we can get it loaded up and uh, get it delivered. All right. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I hope you enjoyed following my little process. As I mentioned before, doing this kind of stuff right here is part of the journey of what I'm doing in the shop. I'm trying to push myself to learn some new things. I've done manual machining my whole career and I'm excited to get in here and try some new things and, and add some new capabilities to what it is that I can do. I have a long way to go. This stuff is actually, uh, it's very challenging for me because every bit of me wants to go over to a manual machine and get this kind of work done. And I'm trying to push myself to learn more and be able to be, uh, eventually be efficient so that I can do some, um, some CAD and write a program so we can come out here to the machines and get something done pretty quick. But I got a lot of training ahead of me to get to that point. We're just gonna keep working on it and I'm gonna continue to share whatever projects come in. We're still gonna be doing manual machining. We're gonna be doing repair work. And in the mix, I'm gonna be showing you some of what I get into on these CNC machines, all right? So as I said, I hope you enjoyed and I hope I see you again very soon.